Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The government is barreling towards a shutdown this weekend unless lawmakers can come to an agreement. How this could affect millions of Americans coming up. And let's look out there with live cam. We are starting at 75 degrees on this Friday morning. We know things will warm up, but I'm actually looking forward to October, which is next week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got some cooler temperatures on the way, according to Justin. And it is Friday. We have made it to the end of the week. September 29th, you mentioned October, right around yes. the corner, Stephanie. Yes. Well, happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for being here on yeah, Friday. Yeah, I love hanging out with you guys, <laughs> especially on a Friday fun day. Good yes. way to wrap up the week. And bringing the good news, like you said, Justin, talking about cooler temperatures. I don't have a smile on my face just because it's Friday. <laughs> right. uh, it's because next week the forecast is finally, finally showing some signs of life, uh, some signs of fall, if you will. Let's look at some of the weather headlines here. Uh, today and the, over the weekend, a few pop-up isolated downpours should not be a big deal, but we do want to let you know over the weekend it's, it's possible uh, if you're going to be out and about that there could be a little bit of rain here and there. Front is in the forecast. Uh, and that uh, shows up Wednesday and Thursday of next week. And yes, really, I'm serious about this. An actual front with rain, with cooler temperatures, maybe with some gusty winds too. Everything we could have hoped for at this point. Uh, right now, we're sitting at 76 degrees. Dew point is at 69. That number's a little lower than it was yesterday. So we should see temperatures drop a little bit more this morning, hopefully into the low 70s, at least for a little while. In the case of 12 hour forecast, 74 at 7 a.m. at uh, noontime, 89. And then by the afternoon, we're up around 96. So it's another very hot day. We don't expect any rain today. Again, that probably holds off uh, with those small chances uh, over the weekend, 20%. Be right now to the football games tonight. Looks good for that, too. Uh, temperatures will be about 93 kickoff, 88 halftime. Sunset is at 722. We're going to talk much more about this front, what it means for rain chances and temperatures, all the fun stuff. It's coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. This morning, a man is in jail after police say he was connected to a deadly shooting at a northwest side apartment complex. Now, Gustavo Garrido Jr. is accused of shooting and killing a man inside that apartment just five days ago on Callahan Road. Police say Garrido confronted the man at the apartments. The two began fighting, and that's when investigators say they shot at each other. Garrido is now charged with murder. A local school bus driver is facing charges of possession of child pornography. 76-year-old Michael Paul Morish was arrested after a search warrant was carried out at his home in New Braunfels. Investigators say that they found images of child porn on his computer. Morish was a bus driver for Navarro ISD since 2010. In a statement posted online by the school district, the superintendent says that he was fired once the district learned of his arrest and that they do not believe any of the students were involved. And taking a live look at the U.S. Capitol this morning, Congress is still barreling towards a government shutdown. And so far, lawmakers don't have a solid plan in sight to avert one. Now they have less than 48 hours to come up with an agreement. As ABC's M1 reports, if they don't, millions of Americans could be furloughed without pay. This morning, mounting tensions on Capitol Hill as House Speaker Kevin McCarthy wrestles with hard right Republicans to make a deal that would avert a government shutdown. Why would they side with Biden on an open border when we have an opportunity to do something like that? Are they doing it for that reason? Are they doing it for personal reasons? Doing it for chaos? Today, McCarthy plans to hold a test vote on a far-right bill urging his GOP conference to unite and approve a measure that would slash federal funding by 8 percent and toughen border security while temporarily keeping the government open. But at least 10 GOP members are against any continuing resolution. Do you believe McCarthy has the vote if he puts that for, TR on the floor tomorrow? No, he doesn't. It will fail. Yeah. The House passed four of the 12 appropriations bills needed to fund the new fiscal year, but they're considered dead on arrival in the Senate. If a shutdown comes October 1st, as many as 4 million federal workers, including 20,000 Border Patrol officers, could be furloughed or asked to work without a paycheck. We can't have uh, the lack of security of our border. Notably, a shutdown could also impact more than a million active duty service members, including Austin Carrick's husband. This mom saying they rely on every paycheck to help with their daughter's medical expenses. They are literally playing games with our lives. We mean nothing to them, but they expect my husband to go fight their wars. That's not fair. 
Meanwhile, the Senate unveiled a stopgap measure that would keep the government open until mid-November, but it includes funding for Ukraine, something McCarthy has indicated is a non-starter for House GOP. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. House Republicans have spent more than six hours making their case for pursuing an impeachment inquiry against President Joe Biden. They launched their first hearing on Thursday, promising to provide accountability as they probe the family's finances and the lucrative business dealings of Biden's son, Hunter. Oversight Chairman James Comer has also issued subpoenas for additional Biden family bank records. The White House calling this hearing a baseless stunt. An appeals court has rejected Donald Trump's bid to delay a civil trial in a lawsuit brought by New York's attorney general. Decision by the state's intermediate appellate court allows the case to proceed days after a judge ruled the former president committed years of fraud and stripped him of some companies as punishment. The decision clears a way for the judge to preside over a non-jury trial starting Monday in Manhattan. Trump is listed among dozens of possible witnesses setting up a potential courtroom shutdown with a judge whose fraud ruling threatens to upend his real estate empire. A Texas couple was arrested for selling a Margay Cub and trying to sell a Jaguar Cub. The couple does not have a license to buy, sell, trade, or transport such exotic animals. They made their first appearance in federal court in McAllen down in the valley on Wednesday. Federal authorities say that they are the first to be charged under the Big Cat Act, which was enacted in December. It bans the importation, transportation, sale, and possession of prohibited wildlife species. Jaguars are prohibited species as well. Authorities say the couple sold the Margay for $7,500 to an undercover agent. If convicted, they could get up to five years in federal prison and a fine of up to $20,000. And time now is 436 and 75 degrees for now. Yeah, all clothes can't go into the washing machine as we tried and the same for goes for the dishwasher as well. Up next, the five items that you put shouldn't be there. Okay, the five items that shouldn't be there unless you want them to keep buying them. Oh yeah, have to replace yeah. them over and over. Yeah. Well, we don't want to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look out there with Transky looking over at Loop 1604 at Marbuck Road where things are moving early this morning and kind of really quiet there at I-35 at New Laredo Highway for now. But we know things will pick up a little later. Well, it definitely feels like a start to your Friday. Taking an outside look with live cam. Again, little Muggy out there, a little bit humid, 437 right now, but uh, expecting some cooler temperatures. We're going to check in with Justin here in just a little bit. Welcome back. It's 440. So I'm a big hand wash, dish wash guy. I, I am like too. I just want to get it over yeah. with if, you know, there's exactly. a small amount. I don't want to wait <laughs> till all the dishes are dirty. Yeah, but for many people, never washing your dishes by hand may be the reason that you bought a dishwashing machine. But as tempting as it may be to wash everything in there, just don't try it. Yeah, 12 on your size, Marilyn Words has the five things that don't go in the dishwasher. Maybe your dishwasher can wash everything, but that doesn't mean it should. There are some items that can really get ruined in a dishwasher over time. Like cast iron pans. Hey, you put a lot of work into seasoning that pan. It keeps your food from sticking and your pan from getting rusty. But the dishwasher can strip the seasoning and leave you with a rusty skillet. Instead, Consumer Reports Molly Bradley says try water and a paper towel. And if necessary, a little dish soap. Copper pots, Moscow mule cups, and aluminum cookware should also stay out of the dishwasher. The hot water and harsh detergents can discolor and tarnish copper and aluminum and dull their shine. Copper can also get scratched, so best to hand wash. Same goes for non-stick pans, even if they say dishwasher safe. That's because dishwasher detergent paired with hot water can ruin the non-stick coating over time. So save your money and wash non-sticks with warm soapy water. And your knives for slicing and dicing can cost a lot of money, so you guessed it, the dishwasher doesn't cut it. The handles can start to separate over time and they can get knocked around, which can dull the blade. Wood, water, and heat aren't a good combination, which means your wooden spoons, bowls, and cutting boards are a no-go for the dishwasher to keep them from warping or cracking. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. So basically just wash by hand. <laughs> I think it's, it saves me time, but I guess unless you're yeah. hosting maybe a huge party, yeah, you have I a guess. bunch of dishes. 
<laughs> get all out of there. All right, time now is 4.42, and uh, what are we looking at there? 75? Yeah, yeah, 75 degrees. Things uh, starting out pretty good on your Monday. Yeah, not too Friday, bad. okay. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Friday. Friday. I hope it's wow. not. I was like, yeah. what? No, no, no. no. Don't want to get past the Happy Friday. Yeah. No. <laughs> the closing of the Art Institute has left many students in limbo, and up next, what students need to know in order to make a smooth transition to a new campus. All right, Christmas is three months away, but those holiday deals are about to drop. We'll tell you about them and when, coming up next. And welcome back, it's 445. So we are still 87 days until Christmas, but that's not stopping retailers from offering some early deals. Becky Worley has more in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Christmas may be three months away, but those holiday deals are about to drop. The countdown is on, Target Circle Week is coming. So there's no question that retailers are responding to the pressure from consumers to be stocked earlier and start identifying for them what they should be focusing on for their holiday purchasing. Target Circle Week launches Sunday, touting big discounts, like spend $100 on toys and you'll save 25, or spend $50 on household essentials and you'll receive a $15 Target gift card. Walmart launching its official holiday campaign next Monday. Walmart's Baby Days deals is back. Best Buy is trying a new approach, dropping limited quality deals that are available only through its mobile app. So how can you lock in the most Yuletide savings right now? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. All right, hundreds of students wondering what to do next after the Art Institute announced it's closing several campuses, including the one right here in San Antonio. All right, Jonathan Goto tells us the organization that's ready to help those students is trying to pick up right where they left off in efforts of finishing their education. We encourage you to complete your education at another school. That is the current messaging on the Art Institute's website. After announcing on Friday, it will be closing eight of its remaining campuses across the nation including one here in San Antonio. When I heard the news of the Art Institute closing, it just broke my heart. Damaris Fike with Cafe College says those students impacted by the closure should not feel alone. That there is a community of support, and especially here at San Antonio Education Partnership, we have a team of advisors ready to help them in this next step, whatever that educational journey may look like. Anai Rivera, a college access and success advisor for Cafe College, says navigating an unexpected school closure as a student can be a difficult process, but not impossible. A lot of um, basic level credits can transfer out to nonprofit schools. So that is one thing I highly recommend is students get their transcripts in as soon as possible to see where those credits are going to transfer in, apply to those other schools. Another item Rivera advises is reaching out to FAFSA if you are receiving funding from them and updating potential new schools. As of right now, if a student is not able to get their transcripts directly from the Art Institute, they will have to then go into the National Student Clearinghouse and request their transcripts. If they already have their diploma, that's going to have to come from parchment.com. Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. All right, taking a look at Trans Guide this morning as we get set for Stephen Cavazos to give us his latest here, I-10 at the Y traffic. There is no traffic there right now. <laughs> traffic <laughs> looking good there. Uh, I-35 there at Zarzamora. Traffic moving along smooth as well. People maybe getting a little bit of a late start today. I think so. Yeah. Although, I, I don't know, I, I usually find coming into work Friday morning, maybe just my route, I see a, a few more vehicles on Friday mm -hmm. morning yeah. than the rest of the week. Yeah, sleeping in on a Friday doesn't sound half bad. I got to <laughs> tell you. It's a good idea. So kudos to those people who are taking advantage of, of Friday. Uh, here's the exciting thing, guys. We've got an actual cold front in the forecast. Uh, it's all we can talk about, Yay. really, at this point, uh, because uh, today's going to be more of the same. 76 degrees at the airport, 74 New Braunfels, 73 Seguin, 68 in Bernie, 71 in Kerrville. There's the forecast for today. We'll just go ahead and get through this part of it. 96. It'll be hot, partly cloudy. No chance of rain today. I think it uh, stays pretty quiet. And heat index values shouldn't be too, too bad. I think they stay below 100, but there could be a little bit of a heat index there. So let's walk you through the forecast today. As I said, not much. In fact, nothing. Uh, but as we get into tomorrow, a little deeper moisture comes in from the Gulf of Mexico. That could lead to a few spotty showers. I don't uh, think we're going to see all that much. Uh, but you could see a downpour here or there Saturday afternoon. So if you do have outdoor plans, just know that uh, that is a threat. 20% is what we're calling for. 
and by Sunday, this doesn't show much. It shows a lot of the action probably out west, but I still think with the moisture that we have in place, there's a chance for some isolated stuff Sunday afternoon too. So to sum it up, your weekend forecast, 93 Saturday, 20% chance of rain. Same story on Sunday, carbon copy. Uh, so that's what we're dealing with next couple days. Now let's look down the line. We look at our trusty water vapor to see where we can uh, detect some spins and moisture in the atmosphere. And uh, we find that up here across the Pacific Northwest. You see this spin right here, this pinwheel looking thing. That is our low that's going to be moving in across the West Coast and it's going to grow and strengthen. Uh, there were some questions as to where it would go beyond that, but now we're starting to get some consistency in our computer models and it looks good for us uh, because I think it's going to eventually help to push the front through. There's not a lot of, across the country right now, but that will change as this low digs out west and again gets a little bit stronger. So this is Sunday, still well to our west, not influencing us yet. But as we get into, say, Tuesday, gets a little bit closer, we start to see a front developing and this system will help to push that front through. So as we get to Wednesday afternoon, this is when our rain chances start to go up. We could see some showers and storms. Uh, right now, and this is subject to change because as we get a little bit closer, fronts often, you know, kind of uh, the, the timing kind of flip flops a little bit. But I think Thursday morning is when we could expect this front to come through. Still with showers and storms in the forecast. And then behind it, we would get that push of cooler air. Now this is not grab a jacket, grab your turtleneck or sweater or whatever. Uh, we'll t we're talking highs in the 80s, but that's nice because uh, it has been 114 days since we've had a high temperature below 90 degrees, just to give you some perspective. Uh, so any sort of change at this point would be fantastic. You got, you got to go back to early June. Uh, it's the last time that happened. So our extended forecast, 93 as we said over the weekend, that'll be the case on Monday. We add in some rain chances late Tuesday. And as of right now, I'm putting in a 40% chance of rain Wednesday, 30% chance Thursday. And you see the high there on Thursday, 87. Wow. I have a feeling that number may go down a little bit, uh, which right. is the right direction. Uh, just know that with these early season fronts, things can kind of change. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll refine the forecast as we get closer. Mm. All right, but it looks good so far. Yeah. Very important good for the, the, the turtleneck crowd. I know Steven uh, Cavazos is paying attention. I know. <laughs> so I did throw that out there for Steven. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. ready. We're all ready. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Time now is 452, 75 degrees outside on your Friday morning. Should we get that one? Yes. <laughs> the creator director, uh, yes, creator director Gareth Edwards talks about his inspiration for the film, plus how you can watch the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony live for the first time. All right, taking a look at some lotto numbers here. Pick three, we have one, six, one, and then six right there. Then we have our daily four, five, four, three, nine, and two. Cash five, 11, 16, 17, 20, 32, and your check is two steps, six, 30, 33, 34, bonus ball six. 455, welcome back. And I cannot wait to check out this movie. I don't know if you've seen some of the advertising looks for it. Looks interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like that headphone look. So this morning, the creator of the movie, The Creator, talks creatively about making The Creator. <laughs> <laughs> that makes Not sense. That. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Sergeant Taylor, we are this close to winning the war. The AI are developing a super weapon. The creator of The Creator was a little ahead of his time. Gareth Edwards co-wrote and directed the film, which is about humans interacting with artificial intelligence and the dangers and pitfalls. And Edwards tells me when he started writing it a few years ago, AI wasn't something people talked about every day. And it was this far distant sci-fi, like flying cars and living on the moon thing when I started trying to make this film and now it's become like quite real in terms of what it's dealing with. The Creator stars John David Washington and Gemma Chan. It's in theaters this weekend. A new breed of heroes hits the big screen. Also in theaters, Paw Patrol is for families. Hello everyone, it's time to play a game. While Saw 10 is for grown-ups who like scary movies. All three films are tracking somewhere in the 15 to 20 million dollar range and it's a toss-up as to which will come out on top. Welcome to the rock and roll. 
For the first time, you'll get to watch the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony live in full. It'll make its streaming debut this year on Disney+. Plus. Usually it's taped, edited, and then runs on HBO. It'll air live on November 3rd from Brooklyn. This year's inductees range from Willie Nelson to Rage Against the Machine. Disney's the parent company of ABC News. And Grammy-nominated singer Halsey is 29 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nagans and ABC News, Los Angeles. Willie Nelson always staying relevant. Yes, <laughs> especially in this area. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Okay, guys, 457, getting close to 5 o'clock on your Friday morning, 75 degrees out there. And up next, more than 70,000 child care programs supported by federal stabilization funding could soon close down. We're going to tell you why and what would happen to the more than 3 million children enrolled. All right, and the Texas retired educator system has not had a cost of living adjustment in 20 years. Up next, how local educators are asking for everyone to give a lesson in generosity when they go to the polls in November. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking over at I-35, Leon Creek, and now I-37 Fair Avenue. Uh, from this angle, things look good, but Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. We will be checking with him very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the Child Care Stabilization Program, which provided child care programs with funding, is set to expire tomorrow. Up next, what's next for 70,000 children, ch excuse me, child care programs who will no longer have enough cash to stay open? And trending now on KSAT.com this morning, a boy is shot while walking. The suspects then crash their SUV and are finally detained at an urgent care clinic. A boy was walking on the side one along the Sunset Terrace when a vehicle with two juveniles inside pulled up and then just started shooting. You can read what police are saying about a motive online right now. Let's look out there with live cam. It's Friday morning, it's 75 degrees, so we can handle any temperature because it's Friday. And we also heard Justin talking about some hope for next week. Yeah, we have some good vibes right now on a Friday morning. Of course, we got Friday football yes. later today and people making some plans out there. So really excited to kind of get the weekend started a little bit here. Yes, well, happy Friday to you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, treat yourself to some iced treat coffee yourself. for now. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, for today, it's Friday. Go ahead and spend the extra, what, I don't know, <laughs> depending you where go. you go. Yeah, five, six bucks <laughs> you maybe, know. yeah. yeah but good, just today, coffee. just Friday, just <laughs> yeah. Friday, Justin. No, 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 it's not the budget. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be budget wow, conscious, that's a, people. That's a quick no. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yes, there's a lot of exciting things to talk about in the forecast. To start, though, we're going to look up to the skies. The super moon last night. Did you see it? Uh, it's still out there this morning. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Peggy sent this in from Bernie. And, of course, the super moon occurs when the moon's just a little bit closer to the Earth, so it appears slightly bigger. Uh, it's the harvest moon as well. Uh, but it is the uh, last one of the year. This was taken out in Sisterdale, actually, and what a shot. We've got a few more coming up on our KSAT Connect. You can check those out, too, on our website, KSAT.com. Uh, temperatures across the country, we do have some cooler air uh, up across the Pacific Northwest where it's been, uh, really, over the last week or so. But this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. There is going to be some cooler air that eventually works in and pushes south and Actually, this time, it may make it to Texas and San Antonio. We're still pretty warm right now, 75 here, 73 San Angelo, uh, 75 in Waco, and it will be a warm weekend. The forecast today, by noontime, 89, and then we uh, make it all the way up to 96. But where we were yesterday, rain chances aren't there today. They do pick up a little bit this weekend, but it's not, uh, not too much to worry about. It is next week where things get a little more interesting. And yes, it could be cooler. As I said earlier, maybe... Just maybe some turtlenecks in the forecast, yes. Stephen. How do you feel about that? You know, Justin, I've been waiting to bust them out. I mean, they have been in a box for months, so I okay. can't wait to see what I have. Uh, but they probably don't fit anymore, so there's that sad oh, part. But you know what? Traffic's moving along great. Let's just change the subject here because I'm feeling pretty good about what I'm looking at here at 1604 at Marbach. Not spotted major issues out there, so that's good news as we are ready to drive off into the weekend. 35 at New Laredo Highway uh, shows a pretty quiet commute, and for those that are heading to, along 410 at Marbach, really don't have a lot to worry about. But we are going to take a look at our
radar map and we're going to continue to watch our roadways closely throughout the week. Some of our trans guide cameras were actually out as well, and it looks like we have them all back up and running. So we have more eyes on the road to keep you clear of that backup. But taking a look here at our travel times, no backups here along 37 northbound. It's still a pleasant drive from Pleasanton with 28 minutes, 28 along US 90 eastbound. If you are heading in from Castroville and the arrival from Lytle should be about 15 minutes along I 35 northbound. So again, uh, we're off to a great start here in the traffic department 410 and 281. These shots are going by very fast, but we'll continue to watch roadways closely and we'll have another update in the next 15 to 20 minutes. RJ. Thank you very much, Stephen. Texas retired educators are asking for a cost of living adjustment this November. Proposition 9 will be on the upcoming ballot. Part of the one-time retirement pension increase was approved by lawmakers in the spring, but the other part needs approval by voters. Retired educators' pensions are funded by working educators who contribute to the teacher retirement system of Texas. The system has, had a cost of, has not had a cost of living adjustment in 20 years. Things happen. The water heaters go out. I mean, people talk about plumbing and cars, you know, breaking down. Where's the extra money for that? And this increase would be for those who retired before September 2020, and they would be anywhere from between 2 to 6%. Election day is November 7th, and that's just six weeks away. The last day to register to vote is October 10th. Early voting starts October 20th and ends on November 3rd. San Antonio Councilman John Kurd says in order to try to cut back on gun violence, he says his office will have a gun buyback program. On November 19th, the, uh, there's going to be a weapons exchange program. This voluntary weapons exchange will happen at the Alamo Dome. San Antonio police will help collect the guns and the people giving the weapons over don't have to reveal their identities. Just drive in, no one's going to ask your name, no one's going to ask where you've got the weapon, no one's going to ask where you live, simple as that. So people won't get money in exchange for the weapons, instead they'll get HEB gift cards. You can read more about the buyback program right now on our website at kset.com. Now to some morning headlines to a struggle for millions of parents where to find affordable childcare. The struggle is about to get even more difficult after this weekend. As ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, families are already looking for creative ways to split the cost of care. This morning, millions of parents are about to fall off what's being called the child care cliff. It could be catastrophic. During the pandemic, Congress approved nearly $50 billion to support the child care industry and help parents nationwide. But tomorrow, that help is set to expire. Child care businesses are going to be put into a position of having to either raise fees on parents or lower the wages of their child care teachers. Estimates show without the government support, up to 70,000 child care centers could close, affecting more than 3 million children. The root of the problem? Rising costs up more than 14% in the last five years. The average cost per child is now nearly $11,000 per year. Single mom Alana Smith says she worries without the federal help, she won't be able to afford it. The prices are going up, so it's definitely a, a struggle to afford daycare and to maintain that working as a single parent. Experts say working parents, particularly moms, will suffer. When there's child care breakdowns, Parents are forced out of the workforce, and it impacts moms the most. So what can parents do? In San Diego, some parents are opting for alternatives to traditional daycare. Hi, guys. A company called June Care connects families in need of child care with stay-at-home parents. I don't work Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, so it was really important for me to get care, good value care when I needed it with somebody that I trusted. Experts also recommend a babysitting exchange when different parents switch off taking care of the kids or a nanny share. That's when multiple families split the cost of one person looking after the children. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. All right, we're getting you going on your Friday morning. Time now is 5.08 and uh, not yet turtleneck temperatures, but 74 degrees outside. Right we'll now. Take it for right now. <laughs> yeah, we will. <laughs> up next, why Google is opening up its AI search feature to teenagers. All right, very interesting. And a popular Southside taco house earned a re-inspection after an inspector found nine repeat health violations on a recent inspection. Up next, what they got wrong when we go behind the kitchen door. And happy Friday, everyone. It's 
Now it's 74 degrees out there. We, we know things will heat up today, later this afternoon and this weekend, but we are looking forward to some good news next week. We'll let Justin talk all about that very soon. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. It's 512. We'll talk about a turnaround. Last month, a barbacoa restaurant on the west side flunked its health inspection, but this month, it nearly aced its inspection. And the popular south side taco house racked up nine repeat violations, so as expected, it got a low score. Tim Gerber gives us a peek behind the kitchen door. Vicky's Barbacoa, located in the 1700 block of Pin Road, failed its health inspection on August 12th, earning a score of 69. But just a few weeks later, they reversed that score to a 96 on a follow-up inspection. Here's how they got the low score. Raw Barbacoa was sitting in still water at incorrect temps. Produce items were moldy. A worker was prepping raw meat, then touched a scale and other surfaces without hand washing. Another worker wasn't wearing a hairnet or hat. Laundry detergent was used to clean the floors and vents. A powder cleaner was stored above raw meat, and the inspector warned them to never wash hands with bleach or other chemicals. There were ants in the kitchen, and pest activity was evident throughout the establishment. Food items were being stored in t-shirt bags, and they were caught still using those bags on the follow-up inspection. <laughs> Oscar's Taco House, located at 705 Barrett Place, earned a 75 on their recent inspection that included nine repeat violations. Foods cooked the day before were not cooled properly, while other foods were not being held at proper cold temps. The ice machine had black residue inside, the sanitizing bucket for cleaning towels didn't have enough bleach, and several towels were found left out on prep tables. A worker was seen wiping their hands on their shirt, then proceeded cleaning prep areas. Another was using bare hands to touch food. A large pot of cooked turkey was sitting on the floor near a cold hold unit that was leaking and pooling water. A reinspection was required. <laughs> El Potosino Mexican restaurant in the 7200 block of San Pedro got a 78 on their August inspection, one point lower than the score they had last time they were featured here on BKD. This time around, the violations included improperly storing foods, a cook touching food with bare hands, a leaky freezer that was creating foul-smelling stagnant water. The entire place was in need of a deep cleaning. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> Oasis Cafe downtown in the 300 block of Main Avenue earned an 82 and a reinspection. They had some problems with roaches. They were told to hire pest control and fix several large holes in the walls. The owner told the inspector he had requested the landlord make repairs. They also needed to remove large amounts of grease and oil by the fryer that could be a hazard. For BKD, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Time now, it's 5.15 and 74 degrees for now. All right, up next, I'm pretty excited about this. We'll tell you when Spotify is rolling out auto-generated transcripts to millions of their podcasts. And a quick check the roads with TransSky looking over here. Well, that was I-35, but things were good there. And now I-10 at Frio looks good there too. Looks vacant there. <laughs> oh no, there you go. A few vehicles. A few vehicles on I 10. So, what a great time to travel. We'll be right back. Determination, endurance. It lies within your fanny pack. And Liquid IV Hydration is packed with three times the electrolytes and jam packed with real flavor. Liquid IV, real hydrating. Cash back is good. But double cash back is even better. Discover matches all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year, which is cash back at its best. Bleeding gums are serious, Jamie. Dr. Garcia? Whoa. You're a sign of bacterial infection. Press gum detoxifies antibacterial fluoride works below the gum line to help heal gums and stop bleeding. Press saves the day. Press. I'm Steve. I lost 138 pounds in nine months on Golo and Taking Release. Since Taking Release, my sleep is way better. My inflammation has gone way down. I'm nonstop now. I feel way better than I did before. I don't sit down in life anymore. 
Hey, welcome back. It's 520 and happy Friday, everybody. Uh, yeah, we're talking about some culinary options. Thinking about some food. <laughs> yeah. Planning yes. for the weekend. Yeah, you know, I, I was honestly thinking about what I want to make this weekend. I always like mm -hmm. to have a really good mm -hmm. Sunday dinner, and I always call them power dishes because oh. they're like dishes that really get you going for yeah. the week ahead. And so I'm like thinking braised short ribs, oh, Cabernet wow, braised short ribs. It's, oh. It takes the whole day, and it's a cheap type of meat. So oh. I'm just... Okay. That sounds really good. Yeah. Power yeah. dish. It's a power, power dish. dish. Power with, dish. With, with leftovers, we hope, for Monday. No leftovers. you got to finish that. <laughs> None. You know, but, uh, you know, it's a good way to get us through the weekend. You yeah. know what? As we get ready to drive off into the weekend, we don't have a lot to talk about in the traffic department, which means I have an easy start to my morning. Uh, as we get a look there, at, oh, well, it looks like we have a stalled 18-wheeler uh, there at 37 at Hackberry. Not causing any issues, though, with traffic. 35 at San Pedro, we are taking a look at just some quiet roadways, but I like the adjective Steph used, vacant. Some of the places look like there's pretty much no one out there but 10 at Callahan West uh, you do have a few folks that are waking up early and getting the morning started early with us now we do have a stall vehicle also reported along 410 it's not causing any issues with traffic but check those vehicles before you hit the roadways and plan ahead state highway 16 Bandera Road we've been talking about this all week we have the curb and sidewalk construction don't forget this is going to wrap up today but the work will take us uh, will start at 9 in the morning finish at 3 in the afternoon that's when we will see alternating lane closures in both directions directions from loop 1604 to circle A. But as always, plan your commute ahead of time. Scan the QR code. It takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. There's a full list of closures updated each week. So just know what to expect before you have to head out the door. And Justin, I had a cup of coffee before mm -hmm. I left and sat outside of my patio. saw that moon. Wow. It's a nice view. It's nice, right? Yeah, Big super really moon this yeah. morning. It looks really cool. We got a lot of cool pictures on our KSAT Connect if you want to go check them out. Uh, really, really pretty. It's the uh, last super moon of the year. Of course, the harvest moon as well. We're all kind of ready to get through September at this point because the summer has been so harsh and September has not been a great month for us either. Uh, we talked a little bit yesterday about the fact that it's the hottest September on record, but it's been above average every single day and it's going to be above average the next couple of days. So every single day in September above average, the average temperature, if you put it all together, is 87.3. The lowest high temperature we saw was 93. I mean, this is uh, this isn't right. The good news here is we finally have some changes on the horizon. Looks better next week. Cold front. It's in the forecast. We'll get to that in just a second. 75 right now. Dew point is at 70. We do have clear skies. So if you want to go check out the super moon, you got well, not too much longer, but uh, it'll be out there. 74 at 7 o'clock, 74 at 8 a.m. 85 at 11 o'clock, 91 1 p.m. And we top out at 96 this afternoon. I'm going to call it mostly sunny southeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Good for Friday night football. But as it has been all season long, it will be a little toasty once those games get started. Forecasts uh, for today, again, nothing out there. But tomorrow does show a few showers trying to work in. It's one of those situations where we'll get some quick pop-up showers. They won't last very long. Shouldn't be a big deal. Won't mess up your weekend plans. But there could be some downpours here and there. As you get into Sunday, this model doesn't show a whole lot over San Antonio. Shows it more out west, but I still think we have a chance for some isolated showers and storms coming up on Sunday, too. So 20% chance both days, temperatures in the low 90s. Now we look down the road, and this is where things get good. We've got a trough that will build out west. This is going to work its way across the country. As it does, it actually strengthens some. we got a frontal battery that gets pushed into Texas. And when it does, should kick up some showers and storms. Right now, the timing looks like Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening is our best chance for rain. The front would push through Thursday morning. Then behind that, we would get cooler air. That timing, subject to change. It probably will. These fronts, uh, until we can get a little bit closer, tend to kind of jump around. At least the timing, the, 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 the timing does with the computer models. So we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated, but it's looking better and better. And I do think we get some cooler air by the end of next week. Very quickly, we do have to touch on the tropics. Philippe and now Rena, it did finally develop. They're right beside each other. Best buds here, and they're going to kind of drift north. Both of them fairly weak, shouldn't affect any land, so that's good news there. Extended forecast, 93 as we said over the weekend. We've got uh, 92 Tuesday, 90 on Wednesday, and yes, a high in the 80s. Thursday, 87. 40% chance of rain with this front. Mm -hmm. We're excited in the Weather Center. We're excited here too. Yeah. You were giddy this morning, Justin. That's how I know Aww. that this is big news. <laughs>
like we're it's been such it's been a such summer, like man. That. Yeah, <laughs> I'm been. here for it. <laughs> we are too. Yeah, love the 80s. Absolutely. All right, guys. Time now is 5:25 and 74 degrees on your Friday morning. And coming up next, we are getting a first look at Fitbit's latest smart band and how much it will cost you. In today's Tech Bytes, Google opens AI search to teens. Kids aged 13 to 17 can now test Google's AI-powered search experience through the Google app or Chrome laptop. Google says it allows teens to ask questions conversationally. Safeguards have been built in to prevent harmful content from surfacing. And Fitbit has unveiled its latest smart band. The Charge 6 uses some features from the Pixel Watch, including Google app support. It also has a battery that lasts up to a week. The Charge 6 costs $160. It's available for pre-order and launches in less than two weeks. And finally, Spotify is increasing the number of transcripts from millions of podcasts. The company says there'll be time sync so listeners can follow along visually as an episode progresses. And Spotify says that podcasters can add timestamp chapters so listeners can skip around. To be honest, I find most podcasts nauseating. They're so disgusting. Those are your tech bites. Okay. All right. <laughs> I know. We're like, okay, Andrew. Yeah. There we go, Andrew. Uh, 528 right now and uh, 74 degrees outside. Well, will the government shut down? Up next, what lawmakers are doing this morning to try to keep it from happening. And get ready. Here we go. For Girl Scout cookies to start. No, no, this is not good. Costing more. Oh, no. Up next, what inflation is doing to your favorite flavors. Are there thin mints on that list? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Ahead on GMSA at 6, we are getting ready to head to the garden. Our Sarah Costa joins us to talk about an organic sweetener alternative. Welcome back. Today, lawmakers will do a test vote on, that will hopefully prevent a government shutdown. A government shutdown is a worst case scenario for the department, so we continue to ask Congress to do its job and fund the government. Up next, why Speaker Kevin McCarthy is asking some lawmakers to do what they've said they would never do. And trending right now on KSET.com this morning, a Texas A&M student president is impeached and removed from office. The Texas A&M University Student Senate voted to impeach and remove student body president Hudson Krause. You can find out why some members of the Senate claim he misused his office. That's online right now. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are wrapping up our work week. We got some good news in the forecast. Justin is standing by with the very latest. Good morning. Good news, first of all. It is Friday, so happy Friday to everybody. That. Happy we made Friday. it to the end of the week. Yes, yeah. we did. And looking forward to October temperature. Oh, yeah, your nails are definitely in yes. the right vibe. I think we managed Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> those are, those are, those are yeah. nice. Try, try, try yeah. to make it happen. Yeah. She's manifesting. <laughs> yeah, well, it is her favorite holiday after all. Yes. Yes, it's a good one. And nobody wants to trick or treat when it's like 90 degrees outside. That's hey. just not okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to start getting some fronts. And the good news is we finally have one in the forecast. So let's look at the weather headlines here. Over the weekend, some pop-up isolated downpours. A front in the forecast? Yes, really, an actual front with rain. This is not going to be one that will, you know, uh, bring out the jackets, no. But uh, we will uh, uh, potentially get high temperatures down into the 80s, which is a great, great change. 75 right now. Dew point is at 70. Uh, call winds. Uh, we may see some morning clouds build in briefly, but all in all, it's going to be a mostly sunny day. We're keeping rain out of the forecast on your Friday, 74 at 8 o'clock. By noontime, 89, and then into the 90s by the afternoon, 96 at 4 and 5 o'clock. Uh, mostly sunny southeast chilly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, which brings us to Friday night football. A lot of games going on tonight, and a kickoff will be in the low 90s. Halftime, 88. Sunset is at 722. More on that front to come. We've got a look at that extended forecast here in just a couple minutes, but we... Now we're going to forecast the roadways. How are things looking right now? Yes, uh, right now things look pretty good, Justin, as folks are waking up and getting the commute rolling here. As we get a look there at 37 at Hackberry, we did have a stalled 18-wheeler uh, out there, but it wasn't really causing any issues, and it looks like it's already cleared out, so that's great. Uh, if you're heading out the door along the north or southbound lanes, just uh, be on the lookout. 37 tends to get pretty crowded in the next hour or two, but right now you should be in the clear, and that's what our map is showing, just a lot of open roadways, but take your time. You just no need to rush, especially 
especially if you're heading into San Antonio. Right now, it's still pretty green from Seguin along I-10 westbound. You have about a 29-minute commute. Along 87 northbound, if you're heading in from Lavernia, you can expect about a 33-minute drive time. And for friends down in Floresville, 28 minutes if you're trying to get here to the Alamo City at this hour. But one last shot here at 37 at Hackberry as we see traffic is moving again in the north and southbound lanes. No trouble yet, but I'll watch the roadways closely and let's keep our fingers crossed we can end the work week without any major problems out on the roadway. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. They help support members of the military every day, but this morning workers at USAA are finding out what it feels like to actually be in the military. Katrina Weber has more from the USAA campus where those workers are getting a pretty startling introduction to it all. Now this is what is known as Zero PT Day here at USAA. It's a chance for the participants to understand what it's like to go through military basic training. But I can tell you just watching, there is nothing basic about this experience. Check it out. These people have all been uh, taking part in what you might call controlled chaos. They got here, it was dark, it was noisy, and they had to jump in feet first to get right to work doing push-ups and other exercises. Now all of these people are USAA employees who volunteered for this, many of them with no military background, but in this drill they are working both individually and as teams all towards the goal of understanding those who they serve, the military members. They're also raising money to prevent suicide among veterans. Now a lot of these, uh, work, a lot of these workers here, again, have no military background, but they did have weeks of training to get ready for, ready for this day, and they will complete it by receiving military dog tags to uh, show that they have made it all through. So we understand there's a lot of tears, a lot of fears that go into this, but at the end, a lot of satisfaction. Reporting from USAA, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. In Washington, a shutdown is right on the horizon. Now lawmakers are trying to stop it. And John Lawrence has more. Washington, D.C. has until Saturday night to figure out a way to prevent the government from running out of money. And if that happens... I think it's unlikely that a shutdown would directly push us into recession, but it is certainly not helpful. Since 1976, the U.S. has had 20 federal funding gaps. Most of them happened when one party wasn't in control of the White House, the House, and the Senate. And that's the current situation. A government shutdown is just yet another drag on the economy because it ends up disrupting lots of supply chains and lots of services. Another effect of a shutdown would be active military members and border control agents being forced to work without pay. A government shutdown is a worst case scenario for the department, so we continue to ask Congress to do its job and fund the government. The GOP-led House passed numerous spending bills Thursday night, including one for the State Department, but none of them will avert a shutdown, and the clock is ticking. Well, there's people that are talking, but it's, as I stated, it's the same bunch on both sides and, and until leadership wants to, wants to walk down there and talk to them, it's just not going to happen. And both sides remain split. The Republicans want to shut down the government because they want to cut Social Security, slash public school funding, and criminalize abortion care. I'm John Lawrence reporting. This morning, the Department of Labor is now investigating Purdue Farms and Tyson Foods over possible child labor law violations. The investigation of the chicken processing plants follows a report from the New York Times earlier this month. The report mentioned an underage migrant worker was severely injured while working for a sanitation company hired by Purdue in Virginia. Purdue says that it plans to cooperate fully with any government inquiry on this matter and take appropriate actions based on the findings. Tyson has yet to comment. New video shows migrants wading across the border between the U.S. and Mexico using blankets to help each other over the razor wire. So they were later intercepted in Eagle Pass yesterday by border officials with groups of migrants as large as 2,000 attempting to cross into the U.S. Border Patrol are actively engaged in trying to manage the influx, officials report. Now, last week, Texas officials signed an emergency declaration to seek funding for additional services. The dramatic surge of migrants along the U.S. southern border marks a turning point after illegal migration had plummeted in recent months. All right, we're cruising along on your Friday morning, 539 right now and 74 degrees outside. Well, shopping at Costco may be a golden opportunity to save for some shoppers. 
But now it's taking that literally up next, how you can get your hands on some real Costco gold. And taking a look outside with live cam and things looking pretty good out there for the city of San Antonio. Getting set for a fun weekend ahead and also some cooler temperatures coming up next week. Justin's hanging out with us to tell us all about that coming up a little bit later. Welcome back. It's 543 in your morning consumer headlines. Your favorite Girl Scout cookies aren't even safe from inflation these days. So a number of councils are increasing cookie prices to cover those rising costs. Now, Girl Scouts of the USA, they, tell, they say that prices vary because local councils set them. Now, classics like Thin Mints will now cost $6 in some areas, and that matches the price of varieties like S'mores and Toffee Tastics. The new Raspberry Rallies are recent proof that boxes can be worth a lot to buyers. They sold out really fast, and they went on eBay for several times the normal rate. Six bucks for Thin Mints? Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll still buy a few boxes. All right, so better add some gold to your grocery list this weekend if you're a Costco shopper. The retailer is selling one-ounce 24-karat gold bars for just under $2,000 each. They've been available on Costco's website and come individually stamped with a unique serial number. Okay, pretty cool. A Costco top executive says they're a hot item and are selling out within a couple of hours after being posted to the website. The bars come from South African mining company, Rand Refinery, and Swiss, a precious metal supplier. Okay, the gold is non-refundable and ships via UPS. Okay. Gonna pick up a gold bar. Right, <laughs> with, with the pack of water. <laughs> Very Toilet interesting. Paper, a giant. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw it in the cart. <laughs> throw it in the cart. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Uh, time now. 554 and uh, 74 degrees outside. Let's look out there with Trans Sky looking at Highway 281. Now Loop 410 in New Braunfels. Things look pretty good still this Friday morning. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 557 on your Friday morning. That's right. Things look okay from this angle, but let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. You know, I'm definitely in a Friday mode today. I mean, as Ice traffic, uh, it, you maybe later. Okay. You know, why not? I mean, hey, I've already uh, had my cup early this morning, and if you are having your cup outside, enjoying uh, the morning before you have to hit the roads, you still have time. 35 and 410 at Marbach. I mean, these shots are going by pretty fast. We want to show you a look around town. You really don't see a lot going on out there, but traffic coming at your screen at I-10 at Proband. But no major issues to report at this hour, guys. I-10 at the Y's. You see traffic's moving nice and smoothly. RJ, you put it great. We are cruising this morning, but just be on the lookout later tonight because we still have a lot of road work that's taking place and this along uh, US 90 over on the west side of San Antonio. We have seen the mill and overlay operations. It's been current, but this takes us up to next Friday, October 6, 830 in the evening to five in the morning. Drivers, that's when you will see alternating westbound main lane closures from 36th Street to Loop 410. So it's a very busy spot. Uh, make sure that you watch out for any textile crews that you may encounter out on the roadways. They're working to make the roads a better place for everybody. So just give them a break and move over or slow down if you see them. But right now we're not seeing any major issues out there. Just traffic picking up by uh, slightly. A little yeah, bit. Well, there you go. So yeah, smooth sailing so far. Good news mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Texas State, do they play? What do, what do they play this? At this Southern time? Miss. Okay. Versus the Golden Eagles. Golden so it'll, cats. it'll still be oh. warm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my Aggies will be in the confines of, oh, wow. uh, of I want to say Texas Stadium. Jerry uh, World. Jerry World, yeah. thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, there, <laughs> nice and cool <laughs> there. Uh, yeah, uh, they'll be taking on Arkansas. But the uh, football games are going to be a little rough tonight and tomorrow because this heat just is won't let up. Uh, and as we go outside for you right now, we've got uh, 75 at the airport, 74 in New Braunfels, 72 in Seguin. Uh, it is down into the 60s in Bernie and 70 right now in Curva. We'll see a few 60s on the map this morning, uh, but probably not here in town. And then by the afternoon, we're back in the mid-90s. So this is that... It is definitely a Friday, I tell you what. <laughs> Let's try this again. Thank Thanks, you, Stephen. You're, you're sure welcome. <laughs> it's not broken, so that's good. good. It stayed in one piece. Let's try this I'm again. I'm so excited about that cold front. I'm <laughs> telling you, man, I can't, I can't get it together over here. Uh, 96 in Canyon Lake, 98 in New Braunfels today. Here's a look at the forecast. We're not expecting any rain today, but as we get into uh, Saturday, there will be a few showers that develop here and there, uh, a few downpours. Shouldn't cause any real big issues if you have outdoor plans, but just know they'll be around. And then as we get into Sunday, a few more showers, especially west of San Antonio. We'll keep in a 20% chance both days. So the weekend, 
Highs in the low 90s, 20% chance of rain both days. Uh, now let's get to the exciting stuff. It's probably why I can't uh, hold my clicker right here. We've got uh, a big system that's developing out west. And that is going to be pushing into the United States uh, across the West Coast and then moving across the country. As it does, it should strengthen a little bit. And that's going to bring a cold front into Texas, it looks like. So this is kind of our first fall front, if you will. You see, this is Sunday. It develops out west. It doesn't have an effect on us yet. But by the time we get into, say, Tuesday, here comes the front into Texas. And I think by Wednesday, our rain chances really start to go up. And then it's on Thursday that some of that cooler air tries to work in. So it's uh, the best of both worlds, cooler air and some rain chances. We could use both around here. It's been 114 days since we've been below 90 degrees. you got to go back to June 7th for that. So it has been a long, long time. And uh, it is a, a pleasant sight to see here on the seven day forecast. So 20% chance rain, as I said, this weekend, still warm Monday and Tuesday. But by Wednesday, we bring temperatures down to 90. We put in a 40% chance of rain. And then by Thursday, as of right now, we've got 87 degrees and a chance of rain, mainly early in the day. Now, the timing of the front subject to change. These early season fronts are always uh, notoriously tricky. The computer models can kind of jump around with the timing, but this is the general idea. I think by the end of next week, we will feel some relief and it's about time. It's yeah, about time. some actual football weather. Yeah, I mean, yes. we're talking 80s here. <laughs> Better uh, than it's 90s. Not, it's I did not, that. you know, the crisp, cool stuff, but it is it is a change. Yes, yeah. Yeah. and we look forward we'll to it. it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks, Justin. You 552 right now, 74 degrees outside. And up next, we are taking a look at new video games out this week featuring James Bond and Disney characters, the Paw Patrol. All right, what a combination there. Okay, mm -hmm. taking a look at some lottery numbers here. Uh, pick three, we have one, six, one, and six. And then daily four, we have five, four, three, nine. And then is that the fireball? Fireball two. Fireball two, here we go. <laughs> Cash five, 11, 16, 17, 20, 32. And Texas two-step, six, 30, 33, 34. Bonus ball, six, we'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we will begin with that story I know you've all been covering, the government shutdown. Less than 24 hours away, no deal in sight. A top White House official is going to join us live with the impacts. Also, I am in two raincoats because here in the Northeast, we are already super saturated this September and now another three to five inches happening throughout the day today into early tomorrow. We will talk about the impacts to travel from airlines to the roads. So much more to get to right here on Good Morning America. The game is Bond, James Bond. Actually, the name of the game is Cypher 007. The Apple Arcade exclusive drops players into a top-down stealth action game experience with Bond going against Spectre. Blofeld expects you to play on iOS devices. The posters for Paw Patrol Day have all disappeared! We can find them! Chase is on the case! The Paw Patrol puppers are back in theaters and on game consoles this week. The kid-friendly Paw Patrol World is a free-roaming adventure out now for Windows, Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation. Ladies and gentle mice, start your engines. Disney Speedstorm is out now for PC and current generation game consoles. The racing action features beloved characters from Disney and Pixar films. It is free to play, but does contain in-game purchases. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I'm gonna have that James Bond music stuck in my head all day now. All right, ahead in our next hour of GMSA, inflation is hurting our budgets and it's affecting retired teachers who, whose pensions have not changed. What they're asking voters to do in, in November to fix it. Plus, we're heading to the KSAC Garden. Sarah Costa joins us a little bit later to talk about an organic sweetener alternative. And up next, the brutal summer heat we've been having could mean a lot more bugs. Say it ain't so. Bugs in our yards this fall. We'll look at why in just moments. And Stephen Cavasso is tracking the roadways for us on your Friday morning. Things looking pretty good out there. We're going to get the very latest traffic and weather coming up at 6 o'clock.
On GMSA, workers at USA are finding out what it feels like to actually be in the military. A look at this morning's event over at the USA campus on the west side. Plus, I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The government is barreling towards a shutdown this weekend unless lawmakers can come to an agreement. How this could affect millions of Americans. Coming up. All right, we've made it to the end of the work week. We are taking a look outside live cam. Got some cooler temperatures coming up next week. Justin standing by with the very latest forecast. Kind of get us going for our weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everyone. It's six o'clock. Can't believe it's already six o'clock on your Friday, September 29th. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we start the show at 430 and it, it really flew by today, it which did. is good. Having too much fun. Yeah, it was a time good flies. time. <laughs> and it always goes by faster on Friday morning. And we also have good news for mm -hmm. next week already. Absolutely. Yeah, let's check in with Justin and see what is going on out there. We know it's going to be a little bit warm today, yeah, but it will be some good stuff on the way. We're going to be warm. It's next week that we are uh, focused on in the forecast because it's encouraging cold front an actual cold front may be in the forecast we're going to talk about it coming up first though super moon do you see it it is gorgeous this picture is from mustang island down there along the coast almost looks like daylight in this picture that's how big and bright that super moon is the harvest moon and uh, yeah it was a beautiful sight to see overnight we've got a lot of pictures coming out on our case connect you can check those out on our website and uh, on our case weather app as well. Uh, if you missed the pollen count yesterday, molds and ragweed are both low. They both came down quite a bit. We'll see where we land today. That pollen count comes in in about an hour and a half. We'll pass it along to you as soon as we get it. Our forecast today by noontime uh, up around 90. Stop me if you've heard this forecast before and then up around 96 this afternoon, mostly sunny. That'll be pretty much be the case over the weekend with some isolated showers and storms. But as I said, next week, next week looks good. Uh, late in the week, at least. We've got a cold front, and we'll talk more about that here in just a bit. Let's check in with Stephen now. Hopefully the Friday morning commute is going smooth. Is that the case? That is the case, Justin. Hey, you know what? It's a good day to be out on the roadways as you can take a look at 35 at San Pedro. No issues to report just yet, folks. We are just seeing light traffic pick up, but remember, 6 a.m. is that hour where things really start to change out there. We're just going to keep our fingers crossed. Things will stay smooth, and you can see from behind me that's been the case. We've been cruising along all morning, 16 to 4 at Marbach. We are seeing a little bit more traffic now that we've entered a busy hour, so that's always expected, but we're going to keep a close eye on things and as always just make sure you do the same. Now we take you to our map and it's showing the same story pretty much open space out there and if you are going to travel into San Antonio there's no need to rush at all. The journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should be about 23 minutes at this hour. 25 no need to rush if you're heading from Boulevardy either along 281 southbound and at this time it's not too awful from New Braunfels. We have 24 minutes along I-35 southbound. So again traffic is off to a pretty decent start but we're going to watch things closely update on road closures and gas prices as well. What that's looking like, I'll have that answer coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Happening today, they help support members of the military every day. But this morning, workers at USAA are finding out what it feels like to actually be in the military. Yeah, this is a really cool experience. Katrina Weber has more from the USAA campus where those workers are getting a pretty startling introduction to it all. And this is what is known as Zero PT Day here at USAA. It's a chance for the participants to understand what it's like to go through military basic training. But I can tell you, just watching, there is nothing basic about this experience. Check it out. These people have all been uh, taking part in what you might call controlled chaos. They got here, it was dark, it was noisy, and they had to jump in feet first to get right to work doing push-ups and other exercises. Now, all of these people are USAA employees who volunteered for this, many of them with no military background, but in this drill they are working both individually and as teams all towards the goal of understanding those who they serve, the military members. They're also raising money to prevent suicide among veterans. Now a lot of these, uh, work, a lot of these workers here, again, have no military background, but they did have weeks of training to get ready for, ready for this day, and they will complete it by receiving military dog tags to uh, show that they have made it all through. So we understand there's a lot of tears, a lot of fears that go into this, but at the end, a lot of satisfaction. Reporting from USAA, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. Topping your morning headlines. You're looking live right now at the U.S. Capitol building. 
out there in Washington, D.C., where work continues to avoid a government shutdown. But so far, lawmakers don't have a solid plan in sight to avoid one. Now they have less than 48 hours to come up with an agreement. ABC's M. Wynn reports that if they don't come up with an agreement, millions of Americans could be going without pay. This morning, mounting tensions on Capitol Hill as House Speaker Kevin McCarthy wrestles with hard right Republicans to make a deal that would avert a government shutdown. Why would they side with Biden on an open border when we have an opportunity to do something? Are they doing it for that reason? Are they doing it for personal reasons? Doing big, big chaos? Today, McCarthy plans to hold a test vote on a far-right bill urging his GOP conference to unite and approve a measure that would slash federal funding by 8% and toughen border security while temporarily keeping the government open. But at least 10 GOP members are against any continuing resolution. Do you believe McCarthy has the vote if he puts that for, CR on the floor tomorrow? No, he doesn't. It will fail. Yeah. The House passed four of the 12 appropriations bills needed to fund the new fiscal year, but they're considered dead on arrival in the Senate. If a shutdown comes October 1st, as many as 4 million federal workers, including 20,000 Border Patrol officers, could be furloughed or asked to work without a paycheck. We can't have uh, the lack of security of our border. Notably, a shutdown could also impact more than a million active duty service members, including Austin Carrick's husband. This mom saying they rely on every paycheck to help with their daughter's medical expenses. They are literally playing games with our lives. We mean nothing to them, but they expect my husband to go fight their wars. That's not fair. Meanwhile, the Senate unveiled a stopgap measure that would keep the government open until mid-November, but it includes funding for Ukraine, something McCarthy has indicated is a non-starter for House GOP. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Well, because of the potential government shutdown, millions of parents are about to fall off what's being called the child care cliff. Now, during the pandemic, Congress provided nearly $50 billion to support the child care industry and help parents nationwide. However, that help is set to expire tomorrow. Estimates show without government support, up to 70,000 child care centers could close, affecting more than 3 million children. Child care businesses are going to be put into a position of having to either raise fees on parents or lower the wages of their child care teachers. For now, experts are recommending a babysitting exchange where different parents switch off looking after the kids or a nanny share where families split the cost of one person looking after the children. House Republicans spent more than six hours on Thursday making their case for pursuing an impeachment inquiry against President Joe Biden. Their first hearing promising to provide accountability as they probe the family's finances and the lucrative business dealings of Biden's son, Hunter. Oversight Chairman James Comer has is also issued subpoenas for additional Biden family bank records. The White House called the hearing a baseless stunt. Looking ahead before we go to break, the Powerball jackpot has soared close to $1 billion ahead of this weekend's drawing. And it's expected to be at $925 million after nobody matched all six winning numbers Wednesday night. Four people in four states are still millionaires, though, in California, Kansas, Maryland, and Kentucky. Texas Lottery says one person in Texas won $150,000, not too shabby, after matching four out of the five numbers with the Powerball. The next drawing is scheduled for Saturday night. Good luck to everyone. Yeah, i definitely take that right there. Anything, um, do you play any of the Powerball? Not really. You know, the only time I, I play any of these games, mm -hmm. I guess, if, if here at work, if a bunch of people are going in, so we then, I, have that, yeah. then I feel left out. <laughs> Yeah, FOMO. <laughs> yes, I do. But other than that, I don't really think about yeah. buying it, you know, on my Look, own. <laughs> I don't want to be the only one coming in at work, okay? Right. If this station <laughs> right. If everybody yeah. wins, you're the only one that doesn't exactly. win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The news must go on, I guess. Okay, 609 right now, 74 degrees outside. And still to come, Google is opening up AI search for teens. What they're planning to prevent harmful content to showing up online. All right, and after the break, the brutal summer heat we've been having could mean a lot more bugs in our yards this fall. We'll take a look at why in just a few moments. Actually, one time, Justin and I... <laughs>
split a lotto <laughs> ticket when everybody else yeah. was buying it. Yeah, I think we were just down on cash. <laughs> we went half, half seas. Like three bucks, right? Yeah. One fifty each. Yeah. Hey, that works. Let's let's win the weather lotto though. <laughs> we'll be right back.